How many have found in your own life that God is so faithful, right? And he's especially faithful and, and his plan to pour good things into our life, the conduit for that, he's chosen to be prayer. We didn't make that up. We didn't think it up. God just laid it down in the Bible, this first principle. You have not because you just, it's incredible. You can miss out on what God wants because you just don't take the time to come before him like a good child would be with their father and just say, God, this is what we need. This, I'm bringing my needs to you. And throughout the Bible, starting in Genesis, when religion began, when men began to call on the Lord, that's the first people who ever belonged to God were not called Jews. They were called people who call on the name of the Lord. And the Bible follows that word all the way through onto the New Testament. He's rich in mercy to everyone who calls upon him. And there's encouragements all along the way where God keeps saying to us, like, ask and you will receive. Not scolding us. Come on, you got to pray you're a Christian. Not that at all. But it's like, come to me. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might receive mercy and grace to help us right when we need it. And I know in an, audio, an audience this big, underneath the exterior, because it's always been that way in my life, there's all kinds of needs. In your own life, in your family, decisions that have to be made, financial, direction from God, strengthening, running out of spiritual energy. You know, all these things are true. You know, you get fatigued. That's why the Bible keeps saying, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Why? Because you can get weak. You can get just, just eking out of spiritual existence. That's not what God wants. He wants the best for us. Amen? And we come to God, and that's why you see all through, in times of, of trouble in the Bible, what did they do? They had an instinct. Trouble, call on God. In the day of trouble, God invites us. In the day of trouble, call upon me. And I will answer you. I'm not going to frustrate you. I'm not going to hurt you. In the day of trouble, call upon me. So you see it in Moses' life. You see it in David's life. You see it all throughout the Bible. You see it, how did the church begin? In a prayer meeting in Acts chapter 2. No one was preaching. There were no outlines, no PowerPoint, no anything. But they were gathering for prayer. And boom, remember the, the, the words of our Lord. Men ought always to pray and not give up. With man, that's impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. With man, that's impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. And there is a growing movement in Christendom today in America. Just study doctrine and fill your head with truth. But actually believe God to intervene in a situation and turn the whole thing around. Oh, a lot of people are like, that's too emotional. That's too fantastic. It's liable to abuse. But I'm telling you what the Word of God says. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What are you going to do when you face an emergency and there's no way out? Except God. And, and look at me, everyone. God ultimately, uh, uh, inevitably, will leave all of us in situations where we have nothing but Him. He'll remove every crutch, everything you lean on. Even friends won't understand you. And your money won't help you. You'll be put in a situation where God, because He loves us so much, is just waiting for us to look up and say, God, You're my help. You're my only help. I have no plan B. You are plan A, B, C, and D for me, God. It's you or bus. And he loves that because he loves to supply for his people. And he loves for us to look to him in faith. For without that kind of faith, it's impossible to please God. And that's how Peter kept on keeping on. Because when it seemed like he was doomed, I'm going to say it. The church prayed him right out of that prison. There's no other moral to that story except that the church prayed, God heard, 
God answers. Listen, there's a lot of mysteries to prayer. I don't pretend to understand it all. But in this story, we know one thing. They prayed. God answers. Peter was delivered. And God's name was glorified. And I'm reminded as I read about Peter's escape, about how those people pray and all the great things God has done there for them, continues to do. So notice what happened. The church is praying and Peter's in the prison, being guarded, chained, and everything. But that stream, this is the, this is the, the, the mysterious part of prayer. Prayer mounts up before God and it almost like gains pressure and breaks through. You don't see the answer right away. And sometimes you have to pray through. Keep on praying. Keep on believing. And then the, the breakthrough comes in answer to that prayer. Some prayers are answered just with one sentence. You pray and the answer is on the way or it comes within 48 hours. Others, you, you just have to mount up in prayer. Keep on praying. Well, as they kept on praying, here's what God did. And He still does this today. The Bible tells us, suddenly, from heaven, an angel was sent. When we pray, when churches pray, every revival in the history of our country and the world, the Great Awakening, the Second Great Awakening, the Welsh Revival, any revival that you read about and study, of which I've done a lot of reading and studying, every revival begins this way people can't take it any longer and they begin to pray and when they pray listen God sends something from heaven it's not man-made you can't create it you can't organize it you can't manufacture it it's something supernatural from heaven in Peter's case it was an angel in other cases it's been a deep sense of his presence in sometimes he comes and people now who are unconcerned about their soul uh, get convicted of sin and everyone's wondering why is everyone so broken and convicted of their sin someone's been praying but when people pray, God responds and sends something from heaven. And I don't know about you, but I'll tell you about my own life. I need something from heaven like regularly. I need something from God. I need something that only God can do. You do what you can. You try to figure out things. But then you get in a spot where you realize, you know what? God has to come. God has to come. Notice, something was sent from heaven. And then Peter was woken up by the angel, slapped him upside the head and said, wake up, get up quickly. That's another thing that God does when people pray. He wakes other people up. Do you have someone in your family tonight? Do you have someone in your circle of friends? They are sleeping, not physically, they are spiritually sleeping. They're, they're, they're not awake, they're comatose. They're not concerned about anything. You can talk to them, argue with them, you can cry over them. But when we begin to pray intercessory prayer, God can come and wake them up. My daughter's with Carol out in California. She was as far away from God as you could get. God woke her up. I tried everything, money, crying, screaming, you name it. I tried it. She got worse. And then when God just let me run out of energy and we did nothing but pray, God actually came one night and woke her up and gave her a dream where she realized, what am I doing with my life? How many believe God can still do that? Lift up your hand. He can do it for your daughter, your son, granddaughter, grandson. He can do it in whatever situation. And you can't give up. Satan's going to say, nah, that's just emotionalism. That's just religious hyperbole. And that's just extravagant talk. I'm telling you, God has not changed. He can wake people up when we pray. Wake them up. Peter was woken up. And the Bible says, what a beautiful metaphor. It happened literally, but what a picture. And the chains fell off. Did you know that when we pray, God can make chains come off? Ask. Everybody say ask. ask. And it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you? 
whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more? Did you ever shout about how much more? Here's a good place to shout about how much more. How much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things unto them that ask him? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. 